They don't want us to know that we can heal ourselves. They don't want us to know that through a simple lifestyle and diet change, we can thrive. They don't want us to know that the medications they are giving us is only putting a band-aid Follow on the me. problem. This, my friends, is one of several ways to cleanse the colon. I call this specific blend the belly broom. It helps with weight loss by burning belly fat. It helps to prevent free radicals. It gets the body energized and ready to fight. Usually, I fast for a couple of days while only drinking this and water. Did you know that Baku tea was consumed by the native Southern African Khoi people as a youth elixir? It's also great for keeping bladder infections. UTIs at bay. Do not consume while pregnant. Yep, yep, let's make this tea. Let me cut some lemon seed, aka lemongrass. Let's get it. Here are some oh, oh, oregano, oregano leaves.
trying the burnt orange trick to get my taste and smell back after COVID. Yummy. Please work. Is natural laundry detergent growing in your yard? It's all because I'm working on my energy Cleaning up, I'm taking care of all myself and me Drinking coffee, take a sip, they say I'm sparkling Manifest, I write it down, you know it's happening New project, shampoo from plants I've got growing in my garden Marshmallow and field mallow Add a soapy texture to the shampoo It's a great detangler And repairs damaged hair English ivy is rich in saponins, which will also add a soapy texture. Rose petals calm fizz, add shine, reduce oiliness, and prevent dandruff. Aloe nourishes the hair and prevents hair loss. It also adds moisture and promotes new cell growth. This is Kranz aloe, but aloe vera can also be used. Calendula nourishes and moisturizes the scalp, softens hair, prevents dandruff, adds shine, promotes hair growth, and is a soothing anti-inflammatory. Sage prevents hair loss and promotes new hair growth, and it adds shine to your hair. The fragrance of this pineapple sage is incredible. Rosemary stimulates blood flow to the scalp, which improves hair growth and prevents hair loss. Let's go harvest these incredible plants. Let's chop the ingredients up into our pot. Now for the mallow. I'm a bit hesitant about the ivy, so I'm gonna leave it this time. Now for the aloe. Remember to scoop the aloe gel out and rinse the gel off. Add the aloe to the mix. I'll put the pot into another pot floating in some water. Then I'm going to put the lid on upside down to make sure everything's submerged. Oh no, part two. Homemade shampoo from plants I've got growing in my garden. Part two. All the ingredients for the homemade shampoo are in a pot covered with the lid to make sure that everything is submerged under water. The pot is floating on some water inside another pot on the stove. This allows the mixture to heat up without burning any of the plants. Make sure to give it a good mix. Now that it looks like a bowl of soup, I'll take the lid off and allow it to let off some steam. It's a little more mixy mixy. It looks gross, but it smells great. Let's pop it on the windowsill to cool. Let's strain the shampoo. Now that we have most of the big chunks out, we can filter. This basket's just holding the filter up. Bubbles! Let's double filter just to be sure. I might have added too much water as usual. But let's whip it up and see what happens. There's definite bubble formation, but there's way too much water. So I could put it on the stove for another round, but the microwave will be faster. A bit better. Let's pop it in the blender to try get more bubbles. It didn't get much thicker. Note to self, use less water next time. Let's try this liquid shampoo. Hair's wet, let's give it a shot. Warning, this is going to be messy. My hair feels really soft already. 
and it smells really great but it's not as soapy as I hoped. I think I'll have to use the English Ivy next time. Time to hop in the shower and wash this off. My hair feels smoother than usual and I didn't even put conditioner in. New project, hair conditioner from plants growing in my garden. Let's see how it goes. Rose petals promote new hair growth and make your hair nice and shiny. Rosemary prevents graying and hair loss by increasing the blood supply to your scalp. Marshmallow and field mallow are rich in mucilage, which helps to detangle knotty hair, making it a great conditioner. Aloe gel opens up blocked pores, which promotes the growth of new hair follicles. Mint also promotes hair growth, but it reduces itchiness and inflammation. Parsley soothes the scalp, helps with inflammation, and enhances hair color. Sage helps with scalp dryness and adds depth and shine to your hair. And this pineapple sage smells incredible. Chamomile to soothe and strengthen the scalp. Time to rinse these off. Now that they're rinsed, I can add the herbs back to the water and start mixing and mashing to infuse the water with all their plant goodness. Now let's get onto these aloes. Let's add the aloe, mash it all up some more. Then I'll pop the lid on and leave it here overnight. Homegrown hair conditioner, part two. I'm so excited. It's been a day, hooray. The water is really nice and murky and most of the herbs have settled on the bottom. So this cold infusion looks pretty successful. Time to separate the plant matter from the conditioner. I've got two hand knitted squares that I'm going to be using to filter. Let's get straining. Oh, I hope this works. Yeehaw! It's happening! Time to transfer this into a bigger bottle. Let's hope it works. Ah. Ah. This is enough. Pop the lid on and I'll store this for later use. Time to try some of this stuff on my hair. Here's the before. So I gave my hair a good rinse because you put condition in wet hair, right? So let's give it a shot. I'm nervous but very excited. How am I going to do this? All right, it's in and I'm dripping with plant oils <laughs> and it really didn't use that much either. Time to go shower. Oh my gosh, it's so smooth. I can't wait for it to dry to see what it looks like. Oh my goodness, I'm never buying conditioner again. Calendula petals are edible and have wonderful medicinal properties. It is an antiseptic and anti-inflammatory. It helps to heal wounds and repair skin damage and can be made into a tea or used as a spice to boost the immune system. The petals can be used fresh or dry. Cape sorrel, indigenous to South Africa. Completely edible and really sour. 
These plants are so rich in calcium that sailors which stopped in the Cape collected Cape sorrel and used it to treat scurvy. Easily identified by their vibrant yellow blossoms and heart-shaped leaves grouped in threes. P.S. The flowers are edible too. New project, face cream from herbs I've got growing in my garden. Sage is rich in antioxidants, vitamin A and calcium, which cleanses oily skin and helps with anti-aging. Mint is rich in salicylic acid, which cleanses and tightens the skin, reduces puffiness around the eyes and prevents pimples and acne. Chamomile is rich in alpha bisopodal, which soothes dry skin and eczema and helps fade dark spots and scars. Thyme increases blood flow to the skin and has shown to really help clear acne. Lemon balm is an antiviral which keeps your skin clean and prevents blackheads. Rosemary promotes healing, stimulates blood flow, increases collagen development and is rich in antioxidants. Calendula helps to repair dry skin, reduce scars and inflammation and prevent acne. Creams made from fresh herbs generally only last a week or two because the moisture in the leaves causes the creams to grow off. So I'm placing my herbs on a sheet of wax paper in the sun so that they can dehydrate, lose a little bit of moisture and once they're a little bit drier, I'll use them in my face cream. Stick around for part two. I can't wait. Time to finally make this face cream from plants I've collected in my garden. The drying process is working, but it's happening real slow because it's doom and gloom out there. Finally, the sun has come out to save the day. Dry up little herbs. I want to make you into a face cream. The leaves are dry and crisp, ready to be crushed and made into a face cream. Now that all the herbs are dry and crushed, I'm going to heat them up with some oil. I would usually add some oil to the herbs and leave it in the sun for a week, but seeing that the sun has been playing hide and seek, I'm going to have to do it on the stove. First, I'll place my bowl with herbs into a pot of water on the stove. This way, the herbs never come directly in contact with the hot plate at the bottom. Here, I have some coconut oil that I'll be using to make my face cream. Let's add it to the herbs so that it can melt and mix in with all the amazing plant oils. When the oil melts, make sure that it covers all the herbs and if it doesn't, you can always add some more. This oil contains chamomile, thyme, calendula, mint, lemon balm, rosemary and sage. To find out why I use these herbs and all their amazing properties for your skin, you can see part one. Now that all the herbs are submerged under the oil, I'll leave it to steep and absorb all the amazing plant goodness. Time to filter. So golden. Transfer it over into the bowl. Once it's cooled, whip it into a cream. I made this face cream from plants growing in my garden. This homemade herbal face cream contains mint to cleanse and tighten the skin, thyme to stimulate blood flow and clear acne, sage to cleanse and nourish oily skin, chamomile to soothe dry skin and eczema, rosemary to stimulate blood flow and promote healing, lemon balm to cleanse the skin and prevent blackheads and calendula to prevent acne and repair dry and damaged skin. Finally, some coconut oil to use as a base. Part one and two explain exactly how I use the herbs and oil to make this cream. Now let's try it. It smells great and it feels good too. Not as oily as I expected.